Via telephone, our first guest, who has generously agreed to pick up the tab on all the free radon test kits today, Summer Barrett, Vice President of Access Strategies. Good morning, Summer. How are you? Good morning. It's my pleasure to offer those free test kits. <laughs> you know, it, it is. Uh, it, it never ceases to amaze me the generosity of our first guest for each show picking up the tab on those free radon test kits. You know, Without no, objection. The majority of the first guests, uh, Rob, are familiar with, with what you do. We had a guest a couple of weeks ago, and I forgot who it was, but when you mentioned them picking up the uh, the test kits, free test kits, they actually got this shocked look on their face. <laughs> what am I? What are you asking me to do? <laughs> they have not picked up this free part just yet. <laughs> Yes, the, the the inside running joke that never seems to end. I, I know. Uh, Summer, thanks for being with us here. Let's get uh, let's get to it here. Of course, you folks are contracted to the Berkeley County Council slash uh, Commission to lobby on behalf of uh, Berkeley County to make sure that Berkeley County leaders are represented in front of the most important people in Charleston, the the, uh, the folks who uh, help things flow, information, money, and such uh, legislation, and. Uh, uh, I guess that contract is up at the end of November uh, for this year, Summer. Do you know what the current status of a renewal of that will be? Um, I mean, you're you're correct. Our contract, our current contract, ends at the end of November. Um, as far as the status goes, I know the county will just because of their, you know, the way it works, they will have to put. Um, the, their government affairs representation, if they wish to continue to have representation, they'll have to put it out for bid and we'll certainly, you know, apply again and hope that our work thus far has, um, you know, proven to be valuable to them. It certainly has returned a lot of money to them. So um, I think the return on investment has been well and above what any of us anticipated going in. I've asked this question probably each time that you've been on, and if not me, then somebody else as well. What is the value of the contract in regards to how much Berkeley County pays for access strategy services? Um, the first year was the largest. I think the first year with all of the expenses was somewhere around 240 and that was uh, actually with Omega prior to us, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, parting ways with Omega, we you know we now represent Omega. <laughs> yes. So it was a it was a, a good a a friendly departure. Um, but I believe that one was like two forty, and then we realized over time that we really didn't need um that large of the ex that much of the expense budget. So we um negotiated with the county and cut some of that portion of the contract out this last year. I can't remember what we ended up going with for the expenses because we still didn't come close to what was allocated to us. Um, we do our best to be really frugal with that money. Um, so we didn't spend probably even half of, of what was allocated to us this year. I haven't checked uh, with our accountant to see what the total was, but mm -hmm. the actual contracted portion is 192 per year. You're saying you potentially spend about 50% of that. I, I could. That's literally. Just, that's just a guess. That's right. I have not checked. Not holding um, you to it. To see. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's also only three months into the year, but the but the bulk of the expenses occur during session. You would think. Um, so okay. I, I so, have not checked with our accountant though to see how much. In other words, if if you only spend about half, then you only bill for about half, and then the county doesn't pay for the entire amount. Is what you're saying. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So there, the expense portion of it is just budgeted to us. Mm -hmm. Like this is the most you can spend in expenses. And we have year over year spent a very small fraction of what was allocated to us. Okay. Can you give us uh, a summation of the returns that you have provided for the council as evidence of your yes. work being worthy of the contract? Yeah. So uh, at the end of this past year, um, as at the end of each year, we go before council and they decide whether they are going to extend it for those, you know, the last two years of the contract because it was originally a year, but with the option to renew for two more years. So at the end of this last year, I prepared a statement for them that just kind of shows each of the bills we worked on during the 2021 session. Then there was a special session in 2021 that we um, worked on a bill and then the bills from the 2022 session. 
and I just kind of um, listed the dollar amounts. Um, some of these are exact, and then some of these are estimates because you really don't know exactly until the county actually receives a bill. <laughs> um, so in 2021, we pa- we worked on two different bills that um, are seeing money returned to the county. One was the Airbnb bill. That's about $200,000 a year that the county is seeing um, right now. And that as more Airbnbs and VRBOs and other types of um, places like that come into existence in the county, that number will continue to grow. But I believe in 2022 is around 200,000. Um, and then we also worked on a redistribution of tipping fees bill. In the first year, it was about 22,600. And then um, in 2023, it's about 45,000. That's the estimate. Um, and get, that will continue to generate money every year and it goes up every year also the, the tipping fees bill. So um, by the, by I think like four years from now, it'll be over, um, I think it's about $200,000. Um, and then in the 2021 special session, we worked on a regional jail per diem freeze that saves the county about $392,000 per year. And then 2022 session, we worked on the same sort of bill, freezing the per diem again. So another $392,000 savings to the county. Uh, We also worked on a mental hygiene evaluation and transports bill that saves the county about $5,000, but it also, and the bigger impact in my opinion, is um, the saving of manpower hours of those deputies um, transporting these people across the state, um, and then the wear and tear on those vehicles, which I don't have an estimate of how much money those two things are saving, but I think that's really the important savings to the county. Um, and then there were two infrastructure funding bills that we worked on in the uh, 2022 session. Those have brought about $34 million back to the county. So the estimated impact for those first two years is about $35 million, 56, something like that. Um, so that's just those first two years. And then in this 2023 session, we, um, we worked on several bills that will return a large amount of money to the county, and I'm assuming you probably want to talk individually about those. But I thought it was important to kind of summarize those first two years and, you know, to just display that our work is generating a large amount of money back to the county. And it's estimated around $35 million for those first two years. Thank you, Summer. I appreciate that summary. No pun intended. Uh, so there, there have been a couple of camps about the relationship between the county and uh, what was uh, uh, morphed into uh, what is Access Strategies now that started out as the Omega contract. Uh, one is that uh, we have delegates and senators who should be representing Berkeley County and county commissioners who should be re- or councilmen who should be re- representing Berkeley County. They're already paid to do that. Why do we need this contract the other camp is and it comes a lot from the people i've interviewed who are delegates senators and county councilmen and women and commissioners and such is that uh you can't spend all that time doing just lobbying for berkeley county because there are other delegations uh, and other delegates delegations of duties that you have and if you're a county Mm -hmm. council person you are six hours away from charleston and you just can't get there all the time because you have your own meetings here as a county council person, and uh, not to mention the fact that uh, none of these positions are full-time jobs here. Uh, Bill, you've been a county yeah. commission president and sometimes critical of this contract, sometimes not. Uh, your response? Yeah, I was going to add to your first camp, and I'd be curious to hear uh, Summer's response to it. We also have the uh, West Virginia uh, Association of Counties and the County Commission Association, which a few years ago, they were very, very productive. Obviously, they had to represent all the counties, but they got several things through. I'm uh, uh, Rob listed two or three groups, but let's add those two as part of that summer. Uh, what do these? What do you provide that the association of county and the county commission association and our legislators do not provide? Well, I, I think I've answered this same exact question last time I was on there. Yes, absolutely. Uh, did you? Was I, I? If I ask it, I apologize. I don't remember yeah. asking that question. <laughs> no, I did. I did. But I'll just briefly say. I mean, you kind of alluded to this. Berkeley County is a very different beast than most other counties. Um, We're in a very unique situation where our population is booming 
and most counties in this state are not facing the, that issue. Um, we certainly wish all counties in the state of West Virginia were facing that issue, but they're just, the reality is they're not. Um, I think we saw with Amendment 2, uh, the County Commission Association and the Association of Counties does not always align with the county council's Berkeley County's views. Um, we also saw in numerous instances of past legislation where a bill may help Berkeley County, but it might not help the other counties of this state. Um, so the County Commission Association and the Association of Counties represents all of the counties that are in those associations. And so if there's an issue that affects just Berkeley County or if there's a piece of legislation that could help Berkeley County, but it doesn't help the other counties, those organizations are not going to work on those bills. They're not going to advocate for those bills. And in some instances, they could potentially advocate against them. If it, okay. if it wouldn't help their other counties and their other counties don't like it, they could potentially oppose it. Um, I can't really think of an example where they actually opposed it, but there have been many instances where they have not been working on legislation that we work on. Um, so Good, that's just kind of yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Thank you, Summer. If I again, if I'd asked that question before, I apologize for re-asking. That's okay. okay. Hey, there's yeah. a new audience every single day. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not yeah. being funny here, but you have okay. different listeners and okay. viewers every day. Okay. Another couple of things, uh, uh, Summer. Uh, Home rule and the 1% sales tax, of course, they may be related or they could be two separate issues. Uh, will, I know you've worked on those in the past. Will they continue to be a source of, uh, of effort on your part? Uh, well, that would be up to the county. Um, I mean, they, 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 the county, Berkeley County always has a list of priorities. That's probably, I don't know, 10 to 12 priorities each session and for the last three years it has been on there i can say that the effort put into those issues um you know we always kind of put feelers out we've had bills introduced that do those things um but once you see that there is no appetite for an issue of that sort um, which there has not been an appetite for that issue, then you don't continue to beat your head against the wall knowing that it's not going to go anywhere. My mentality is has always been let's really fight for the legislation that we know we can get uh, some traction on and we can hope to get across the finish line and bring some good results to the county. Um, so my effort on those issues has been pretty minimal because there's just not an appetite for it. Bill, I'm going to jump in here real quick because I want to get Mike Height involved in this as a delegate. Uh, the Ken Matson camp uh, says that uh, as a Berkeley County delegate, you should be advocating for money that comes back to Berkeley County and projects that are supposed to get done in Berkeley County. Why do you need a lobbyist in, in Charleston to do that? Isn't that your job? Sure. Yeah. And, and I understand where he's coming from. But at the same time, I do advocate for Berkeley County, but while I'm down there and acting as a delegate, I don't have time to advocate for Berkeley County the whole time I'm down there. There, there's two to four thousand bills that that come across our desks that we have to look at and read and determine whether they're good or bad or make amendments to them. And so we, we can't focus our entire time on the issues of Berkeley County, that there, there are just too many other things going on. And I think that's why you have a lobbyist down there is so they can focus their time on the Berkeley County issues almost the entire time that that they're down there now i realize she doesn't yeah. do that all summer doesn't do that all the time she has other clients as well but she can focus her attention on the issues that affect berkeley county a whole lot more than i can as a delegate because of all the other bills that i'm looking at as well yeah, yeah. and if can ahead, i just sir. kind of insert Please. um i'd like to give two examples of legislation that made it across the finish line that kind of go to what mike just said um and and i I don't think any of us are ever going to convince the camp of people that are against this that this is a good thing because um, they just truly have the opinion that this is bad. And I don't think most of them are really willing to understand why it's important and why it's valuable. But um, for the people who do care to, to 
hear what we accomplished and and why this service is of value to Berkeley County. Um, you know, there are two bills that that. With our, without our work, would have likely never made it across the finish line. And the first one is the regional jail per diem bill. Um, this started as a Senate bill, passed the Senate, went over to the House. And I and uh, Daniel, my partner, we spent tons of time educating the members of, how, of the House Finance Committee, like the, the chairman. Um, we met with the majority leader numerous times. Um, everyone was on board with running this bill through the House process. It was on the agenda on the Monday Monday of the last week of session and was suddenly pulled from the agenda. And when I asked why, everyone just said it's dead. They want to put it into a study resolution. And I, Mike <laughs> Delegate Height uh, is actually even one of the people that I you know went to and said, what are you hearing about this? And his, re- I don't know if you remember what your response was. Uh, you said it's dead. Um, and I don't take it's dead as an answer until midnight on the last night of session. Um, everyone in the house kept telling me it's dead, it's dead, it's dead. And we found a way to get it into a bill that had already passed the house and was pending in the Senate and the Senate was not going to run that bill, but we were able to amend the, um, language of that initial bill into the house bill. And the Senate passed that bill again, sent it back to the House. And then basically what that did was give us four more days to keep this bill alive and to hope that the House would come around um, and and ultimately pass the bill. So then I spend those last three to four days advocating and basically pleading with the House to let, you know, take up this bill that had come back to them and concur with the changes. Um, And... Truly, without those efforts, this bill would have died. What the House members were telling me would have been true. It would have been dead. And this bill is going to save Berkeley County over $500,000 a year. And if that alone doesn't, uh, you know, display the the importance of this role, I I really don't know what more I can say. Um, The other example is the bill that Delegate Hardy has worked on and advocated for and honestly fought for for the last several years, and that's the um, accelerating the conversion of the excise tax on property transfers. Um, this, the biggest hurdle for this legislation has always been in Senate finance with Chairman Tarr. And so actually for the last couple of years, we always are looking for a bill that might come out of the Senate that opens up this section of code that we can somehow put Delegate Hardy's Uh, bill text into. And so very early in session, there was a bill that was identified that does did open it up. And Senator Tarr happened to be the sponsor of that bill. So we work with Senator Tarr and convinced him to add Delegate Hardy's language into his bill. Um, And ultimately, we saw that bill cross the finish line. And I believe because it was Chairman Tarr's bill, and he, you know, agreed to do this, was really the only way it made it across the finish line. And, and by the time this is fully implemented, that will be a $3 million uh, return to Berkeley County every year, and it will grow over time. So that's over $3.5 or $3.5 million in two bills, uh, and it'll probably increase over time. That, you know, we're, we're essentially dead had we not um, advocated for them. She's right. Those, those, mm-hmm. they were dead. If it hadn't been for her efforts, um, and and trying to get that bill put into another bill, uh, it it wouldn't have gotten across the finish line. And one of the other aspects that people don't realize is is lobbyists and and even us down there as delegates um, trying to convince other delegates or senators uh, to to our way of thinking. You have to build relationships, and and that's what what summer and daniel have done down there as lobbyists they've built relationships on both sides of the aisle and these are important relationships where they have the ear of somebody else and they can go talk to them on a moment's notice and i don't know of any other uh lobbyists down there that uh, that have the ear of so many people um as do summer and daniel hall down there uh that that when when one of them calls you you take the call and you ask you know what it is that that 
they're seeking. You know, you don't always agree with them, but they do have the ear uh, of a lot of people down there. So I, I see them as very effective lobbyists down there. And it's as as much turnover as there is in the Senate and the the House. Um, it's difficult sometimes to build those relationships uh, as well as some of the lobbyists down there. And uh, Summer, I got a text from Mike Height that said, uh, Mike <laughs> Hornby, I'm <laughs> sorry, said that jail bill was dead. Summer dragged it across the finish line. So uh, and the, the comments by Mike Height and by Mike Hornby are, are interesting to me, too, because I think when this contract was initially signed with Omega, you two were – uh, somewhat skeptical of the oh, amount absolutely. Yep. and and the sure process was. of needing a lobbyist to do this. So both of you have seen this work firsthand in Charleston, and you both appear to be big backers of uh, this contract now. Sure, I mean, and and I don't see I don't see Summer down there as much as some other people, and I I think that's uh, by design. You know, I I think Summer believes that. Uh, the delegation from the Eastern Panhandle, she already has their votes, so she doesn't have to work that that group of people as much. It's the other people in the state, and I think that's where they spend most of their focus, um, trying to convince them that why Berkeley County has the needs uh, that they do, and how that may help the rest of the state in their areas as well. So, um, go ahead, Summer. Um, I just want. I know we're kind of running out of time, probably, um, and. There, well, there's actually kind of two things I want to say. One tagging on to that um, is I love, I, I like to listen to the experts in a field. And even at the legislature, we're told to listen to the experts. Um, you know, if, if it's a bill about education, uh, we want to listen to teachers that are in the classroom every day, which I think is a very good uh, reason why Amy Grady is now the chair of the Senate Education Committee. She's a public school teacher. She has firsthand knowledge of what happens inside a classroom and inside a school setting every single day. Um, the same goes for firefighting legislation or medical legislation. You know, you have doctors come before a committee. You hopefully have doctors and nurses on the health committee because you listen to those experts. And I think it's interesting that um, people like Delegate Height and Delegate Hornby who um, were against, kind of not necessarily against it, but were skeptical of having a lobbyist for the county once they saw the process and how it works day in and day out and they realized what their duty as a delegate actually includes. I, I don't think from the outside, I, I wish I could take every single person from Berkeley County to the legislature, especially for the last half of, of the session and just see what these people go through. Um, you, you, sometimes they're on the floor all day long for the last week of session, and there's no way they could know what's happening in the Senate at any given moment. But we're monitoring the House and the Senate. Um, we're monitoring, well, I don't know how many total committees there are, but I think in both chambers there's probably 20. And so – you simply, as a delegate or a senator, could never monitor everything that's happening because you're, like, actually in it doing it. Um, and so I think it's important just to know that there are these – there we are experts in this. We do this every single day, and not just for the 60 days. I think earlier in the week, um, Councilman Gokenauer mentioned that Monday morning – I got a phone call from Senate President Blair and the governor's office, and I sat on the phone with them for I don't know how long, trying to figure out an issue with um, ARPA funding that Berkeley County is going to be getting to expand um, water in South Berkeley County. And all of our local delegation was back is now back home doing their everyday jobs. Um, but I'm still working on these issues that impact Berkeley County. And this specific project is going to bring about $25 million in grant funding from ARPA to Berkeley County. And I spent probably all day Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week working with um, the legislators and the governor's office and the WDA and the IJDC and our Berkeley County Water Department to make sure that this happens. Um, so my job doesn't stop at the end of session. We keep working on these issues and we make sure that Berkeley County gets the money that they deserve. 
Well, yep. Berkeley County's budget is fifty million dollars, and that one hundred to two hundred thousand that flows to access strategies is probably the most heavily scrutinized of the fifty million dollars. So, so <laughs> Summer, we appreciate you answering some questions this morning. Thanks, Summer. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great day.